Okay, so in one of my last videos, I started... I want to elaborate something that I brought up in one of my last videos. When you deal with someone like Joseph Campbell, okay, and this seems to be a common theme among religious people, people, mystical people, people who are, who are interested in this type of stuff and who have some degree of notoriety or fame within these type of realms. They tend to talk in superlatives, almost to a man. The sole exception that I said was Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson does it a little. Someone like Joseph Campbell does it a lot. Deepak Chopra, half the stuff he says is superlatives and woo. And there are some, even he makes some really good points, actually. So, what's going on? As I explained in one of my last videos, you watch Joseph Campbell. And I strongly recommend watching Power of Myth on Netflix. It's pretty darn good. There's parts of it that are good. Parts of it, he goes off into La La Land. Tends to come with the territory when you're dealing with people. When you are dealing with someone like, like that, a lot of the information they are ferreting out about, he's, you know, reading stuff like mythologies, he's reading things like Buddhism, different religions, he's exploring these texts, and he's coming to conclusions that are based on deep, intuitive understanding. Now, as I pointed out, scientists use deep, intuitive understanding all the time. It differentiates between what? Between the good and successful scientists and the lousy, irrelevant science scientists. Because you have a, a sort of phenomenon to investigate. You have to differentiate between what, what, what investigation is actually going to produce tangible results and what is just going to be spinning my wheels, wasting my time. You have to differentiate. And you cannot do that without deep intuition. You cannot. You will get lost. You will waste your time. You will spin your wheels. So science actually uses the process of intuition. And it's starting to organically... It, it's starting to organically come to a point where it starts to account for that in its own metho methodologies. But scientists use intuition. That's how they decide what experiments to do and what not to do. Other than that, it's just a sort of phenomenon. You can investigate infinities at random. Now, spiritual type people are telling you that intuition is extraordinarily important. So Joseph Campbell does the same thing. He starts investigating different types of mythologies, different types of religion, and he's trying to be led to the best of his ability by deep intuition. Now, here's the downside of someone like Joseph Campbell. As I said, he'll talk in superlatives. He'll say three really interesting, relatively profound things, and then he'll say something totally out to lunch. And he won't know the difference between the three. He won't know at all. What I'm trying to explain to you is that you, if you want to get something out of this, if you want to actually understand for yourself the complex phenomenology of religion, the complex phenomena going on for real, not in some bullcrap way so you can, you know, be Mr. Atheist debating on YouTube, because let's just be perfectly crystal clear right now, I have almost zero respect for it at this point. It's really simplistic and really kind of dumb, honest to God. But if you want to really understand religious phenomena, really understand what's actually going on. You can still stay an atheist. I don't actually care about that. I try to make that clear in my videos. I don't care one iota what you believe. But if you want to investigate this stuff honestly, you need to sift out for your own edification and for your own clarification when people are talking woo and when they're not. Just because someone talks smack three times in there they say wildly outlandish things doesn't mean the other three things they say aren't really on point. You need to differentiate the difference. See, atheists, atheists are looking for the outlandish things so they can write off everything that the guy says. As a rule. Uh, not all of you, but most of you. Or not most, uh, some of you, let's say. Okay, fine, some of you. Fine, some. Well, I'm fine, I clarify. Not all of you, some of you. You're listening for what? This is, this is how a lot of the atheist conversations go down. They go down exactly like this, promise. 2 plus 2 equals 4, 3 plus 3 equals 6, 6 plus 6, plus six equals 12, 10 plus 10 equals 15. 10 plus 10 equals 15? How could you say that? Gee, what a coincidence. You I said four true things. You latch on the one thing that's debatable. Why? Because that's really what you, all you want to do is debate. So all you want to do is debate. You don't care about what's true. Yeah, it's true. Christian's true. Fine. Whatever. Whatever. Fine. Fine. Pot calling the pedal black. Whatever. Fine. Yeah, Stephanie does it too. Stephanie. Stephanie does it all the time. <laughs> I don't know. Fine, it's true Christians too. 
But that's a really, really, really dumb way of engaging with, with things. And you're the loser for doing that. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's of no service to you whatsoever. If that's how you engage with people and that's how you engage with things that you're reading and that's how you engage with ideas in general. There's an agenda to that and it isn't finding out the truth because you're never going to find out the truth that way. The agenda to that is prove, uh, let me prove how smart I am. Let me prove how super intelligent I am. And it's a tedious agenda and it's immature and it's not going to, it's not going to do you any good in the long run or even the short run. Short run, you're going to make enemies. Long run, you're going to not learn anything. So it does you no good either way. And that's what a lot of people do. I guess Christians do it too. But, you know, I'm not interacting with the Christians in that type of way. So I, 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 I tend to see it more in the atheists. But that could be by virtue of my relationship with the atheists. More. Um, anyways. So, when you are listening to someone like Joseph Campbell, okay, learn to sift. Even when you're listening to a creature, Christian preacher. I don't know why nobody else seems to be able to do this. I do this really naturally and easily. I go listen to a Christian sermon. I don't walk away with the, the ten foot things he said that annoy me or irritate me or that I thought were fallacious. I walk away with the things that I've said that he thought that I thought were good and valuable. And I hold on to those. I do that all the time with everything. I sift automatically between the things that I actually think are right, true, valuable. I hold on to those and the rest of it, I just whatever. That guy's got issues in that area. <laughs> I just make it as simple as that. That's what you need to do when you are dealing with spiritual people, when you're dealing with religious people. Why? Because we have a defect. And it seems to be all of us to one degree or another have that same flaw. Except Jordan Peterson, and I like to think except me, but who knows, maybe even me. They tend to talk in superlatives. They tend to get giddy with the sound of their own voice and start saying outlandish things. When they, when they might have said three or four really interesting, really common sense things, really true things. And then they'll say something, you know, that takes them to another planet. And that's what you latch on to. Why? Because you want to prove them wrong. Don't. Don't waste your time. You don't ever have to believe anything anybody says. So don't waste your time trying to prove them wrong by latching on to the dumbest things they say. Honestly. You're not doing yourself any service. You're not. Latch on to the smart things they say. Latch on to the wise things they say. Latch on to the things that they are actually you think are true. And then try to see what, what, examine those. Put those under your microscope. Take a good look at those and really think about those. Because that's where truth is found. Anyways, that's all on that for now. I don't know. I, I, thought, it was, I thought it was a good point. Whatever, whatever. I thought it was a good point. So you didn't think I thought it was a good point. All right, never mind.